Thank you, Jie. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. So um, I don't know if uh, for those uh, don't know about the Momiji Healthcare Society. So Momiji Healthcare Society is uh, supportive housing. Uh, we are located at um, Kingston Road and Markham Road in Scarborough. It's for primary Japanese Canadian seniors. So we have about 155 plus seniors uh, living in this facility. So what kind of uh, the services uh, we are providing during this pandemic is we are mostly providing a services uh, virtually uh, online. So the SAUC uh, activity department having different kinds of activity on using a Zoom, like a dance group or exercise or a fall prevention group. And if you want to join those group, please uh, let me know, okay? And we also um, have the online caregiver seniors information session. Uh, so we having advertised more uh, program at the end of the session. So providing our service, uh, pro, uh, our service, for uh, seniors uh, who is over 60 years old and their caregivers. Thank you and enjoy. Uh, Mabel, you want to introduce uh, eHome? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Mabel from eHome Center. Um, we are very happy to be here today. Um, Yihong Center provides um, community support services, uh, home support services, long-term care services um, in the different location. Uh, we have uh, two long-term care homes in Scarborough, uh, one in Markham and one in Mississauga. And we are going to uh, have three more new long-term care homes in the coming few years. Um, so during the pandemic, we have been providing our programs um, through telephone as well as online platforms. Um, so we have a virtual adult day programs, uh, we have webinars, we have support groups. Um, so if you're interested in our programs, please check out our website. Thank you and Happy New Year. Thank you, Mabel. And uh, so my name is Chie. I'm a social worker at the Japanese Social Services. JSS is a nonprofit agency providing a counseling and programs in Japanese and English. We, our office is located on the second floor of Japanese Canadian Culture Center. However, as you all know, the JCCC is closed to the public right now because of the pandemic, as everyone's in the same situation. Uh, we are now um, doing a services in person right now. So we take counseling on, uh, online or on uh, over the phone. And so if you call our number, it will go to the directory, uh, our, one of our staff's phone. So you don't have to hesitate to call. But just uh, no, feel free to call us for any uh, anything, any uh, any questions or any concerns or any services, any questions to the services. Um, you can just call to this line. Uh, and also you can email to ask us about any, any service questions. And we are up now, um, the programs are delivered through uh, online like this one. And we are currently planning to um, provide the uh, senior yoga program. And also uh, um, that chatting program, like a chatting, one-to-one -one chatting over the phone with the social worker program. So that would be launching sometime soon. So that we will let you know. So stay tuned uh, to our information. So uh, and if, if any questions, you can let us know. Okay, right now then uh, we're gonna go into the presentation part. So uh, we're gonna hear from the Japanese culture first, uh, going on to the uh, Korean and Chinese culture. And at the end of the Korean culture, there's an interactive, uh, I think, uh, quiz is going to be presented by the Chinese group. And then after that, we're going to go into the quiz, okay? Then I'm just sharing. Take away, Momiji.
Okay, hello everyone. So uh, my name is Keiko and uh, I would like to introduce um, presenter for uh, how to celebrate in a Japanese uh, New Year. So her name is uh, Mrs. Kazuko Hosogoe. So she is our one of our tenants at the Momiji. So she will present in Japanese and uh, I will briefly translate it in English. Thank you, Kazuko. You can Hi. start. あの、私英語ができない日本語で、あの、説明しますが、お許しください。So my name is Kazuko and uh yeah, sorry that I have some problem like a uh, uh, difficulty of uh, speaking English, so I will translate uh, I will speak in English. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi. まず日本の行事をお話しするには日本の信仰についてあの一つの一人の神様が全部を守るという考え方ですが日本は例えば海には海の神山には山の神火の神などなど全て形あるものに神様が宿るということを信じられています それで毎年毎年土地の空りには神様守る神様が順番に変わっていくのであたらしい神様を迎えするためにあの神様を中心とする行事が始まりますはいお願いします to talk about the Japanese event, uh, we must first explain our faith. The big difference between the religious views of Japan and foreign countries is that Japan is a polycystic, the belief in more than one God. In other words, uh, it is believed that each God um, design in all things that have in shape like a mountain god or a water god or a fire god unlike one god who protects everything it is believed that guardian god will protect you in turn year after year so all the event from the end of the year to the beginning of the year will be centered around the God. Yeah. それの一番最初の大掃除です。あの、日常の掃除よりも大々的に直すところは直して新しいものを新しいものに変えて随分大掛かりに掃除をします。はい。The next uh, is the year end cleaning. I think in North America uh that we have like a spring cleaning um so we do have a year end cleaning in japan at the end of the year we will prepare for the next year's god to comfortably protect us first of all preparation for the new year will begin on december around december the 13th we will 
welcome a new God and keep our house clean for a new God in order to protect us comfortably. Thank you. So the so water condo kazaritskeni nadimas no mingi no yoni moni wa matsu matsu wa mukashi kara ano ma ya mayoke to yukoto natte imasu de sore o mado ni ano moni ano kazatte atarashi kami samo omukae suru so you as you see the picture on the right uh, at the entrance of the house the both side the decorations the ornament decoration made of pine um, the entrance to praise a god welcome so the pine tree have long been regarded as a ward of evil or protecting against misfortune. Uh, do you want to talk about the osechi ryori? Ah, お正月用のおせちというりを作ります。これにはみんな日雇って3日間神様を台所で働かせないために3日間だけはキッチンに誰も so we have the sequence. So first one we did year end cleaning, and then next one we put the uh, decoration, pine decoration uh, at the entrance. And then the, after you did a uh, decoration, uh, prepare our New Year's dish, which is showing uh, left side, uh, we call osechi ryori. So this dish is prepared at the end of the year so that the God of fire can rest on New Year's holidays. So it is said that you will not be able to stand in a kitchen for uh, the new year, the beginning of three days of the year. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> おそばを食べる習慣があります。これは来年も細く長く生きられるようにという気持ちが込められて大抵の皆さんは食べると思います。そしてそれが終わるとあの。大体の人が除夜の鐘を聞くために あの、清めていく意味があります。人によっては場所によっては、あの、一人一人が鳴らせて鳴らしてもらえるところもあります。はい。So the next after you prepare the new year's dish, the next thing uh that we wanted to uh tell you that we eat the japanese eat the buckwheat noodle that showing on the left side uh before the beginning of the year it's usually uh the december the 31st night 
And we wish that we can live long and frugally next year as well. So that's um, the wish to eat the soba, the buckwheat noodle. So the joya no kane is the showing the picture on the right side. Uh, at the temple, uh, the bell rings 108 times across midnight. Um, it is said that there are 108 greed, and it is so that the sound of the bell will wash away the greed for a year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, みんな、若い人は、あの、真ん中にあるように、ちゃんと、せ、清掃した気持ちで行く人が多いです。それで、その初詣を終わった後に、初日の出を見るのが、なりは、いねなってます。so many uh, Japanese people believe uh, the mix of like uh, Shintoism and uh, Buddhism. And uh, this one's uh, the middle picture is the shrine. Uh, it's related, originated from the Shintoism. So the Japanese uh, most of many of the Japanese visit the shrine, like a fast shrine visit of the year, um, and the first sunrise, uh, which is showing on the left. So this is an important event at the beginning of the year. Japan is a also the first country. Uh, I'm not sure is the first country in the world where the sun rise. Uh, when I check yes. it, also the New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it's coming up as well. So I'm not sure. But uh, when they go to a shrine for the first visit, uh, you see like a kimono ready, like a you know where uh, where Japanese traditional uh. Uh, clothes that we call kimono. So they wear the kimono and then go to our first shrine visit. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Ganjitsu wa daitai kazoku de sugoshi de yosono ie ne homon suru no wa tsutsuka kara ni narimasu. So de mika kan wa ano gohan de wa naku お餅というものを食べます。それで、7 Hi. 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 So Zoni is on the left uh, top of the picture. So it's it's the um, consist of uh, mochi. It's a sticky rice. So for the three days of the new year, we eat uh, sticky rice mochi instead of rice. And the uh, right side of the picture is called Nanaksagayu. On the seventh day, we eat porridge made with winter vegetable and enjoy New Year's health. It also means to rest your stomach in the first week. Thank you. Hi. Sorry, the お正月
場所によっては女だけですごくす、女正月というのもあります。お願いします。Yeah. So, uh, the little new year, uh, 小正月 refer to the three days period in the middle of the first month that includes the 15th day. Depending on the region, there are small scale celebration, the Dondo Yaki Festival, which is showing on the,、uh, on the pictures,、uh, which burns New Year's decoration and the Uman's New Year, which is celebrated only by women. Hi. 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 このように日本の毎日の生活文化は神様なくして生活できません。例えば、いただきます。ご飯の前にいただきます。終わりにごちそうさまでした。というのも、神に感謝の気持ちを表しています。このように、日本の神心というものを、もし理解できた日本を知ることにもっと深い思いが芽生えると思うのでぜひ学んでみてくださいありがとうございました。Yeah, daily, daily life in Japan would not be possible without the God of Man. よろゆよろあ、uh, uh, ごめんなさい。ヤオヨロズの神。In Shintoism, it is believed that a God exists for everything. For example, itadakimas and gochiso sama de shita before and after the meal are also included. In, it consists of a divine heart. So if you wanted to know Japan, you can enjoy Japan dozens of times if you understand the culture. Thank you very much for your viewing. Thank you, Kazuko san. Arigato gozaimasa. Thank you, Kazuko san and、uh, Keiko san. So,、uh, yeah. I didn't even know some of them, so it's really good to learn. <laughs>、um, and so, now we're going to go into the Korean culture. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Lunar New Year. Say, Bong, Mani, Patiseo. We greet each other with say, h e Bok, Mani, Patiseo, or Lunar New Year's Day. Um, let me introduce myself.、Uh, my name is Karen. I am a student studying social service work d u r i n g t o l o g y program at Seneca College. I have been working remotely in Momiji as a practicum student since last September. I was born and raised in South Korea and came to Canada about 10 years ago. Yeah, and、uh, in 2019, I started studying the ontology program at Seneca College、um, to learn about、uh, working with seniors. So, today I am very happy to be here to introduce Korean Lunar New Year to you all. That's why I'm dressed in Korean traditional clothes, Hanbok. I hope you will have a great time exploring Korean New Year culture with this presentation. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to talk about the special holiday, Seollal, and how Koreans celebrate this important time of the year.、Uh, first, Korean New Year, called Seollal in Korean,、uh, is celebrated on the first day of the Lunar New Year. So, this Friday,、uh, February 12th, will be the Lunar New Year's Day. Um, as you know, many countries around the world celebrate the first day of the Luna,、uh, New Year according to the solar calendar.、Uh, but in Korea, same as China, people celebrate Lunar New Year as well.、Um, this holiday, Solar, is one of the most celebrated among all of the Korean holidays. For Koreans, Solar is a family holiday more than, even more than Christmas. Well, we celebrate Solar for three days a day before actual Lunar New Year's Day, and the day itself, and the day after.、Uh, because it is the largest holiday of the year, we need、uh, many, many preparations for food, 
gift and travel expenses. And Seollal is a time for family reunion uh, because if they live far away, it may be one of the only time in the year people can see their family. And even some family members who are overseas uh, travel back home to get together during this holiday. Because of this, travel expenses are very high and it's the busiest time of the year. As you see the photos, there are huge crowds uh, when traveling open with uh, traffic jams and booked out uh, trains and buses. I also have a memory of uh, when I was a child, I had to wait in long lines with my dad to purchase a train tickets to visit my grandparents' home. Uh, my grandparents lived in the southern area of Korea, takes, from, takes five hours from Seoul. But now you can purchase ticket on the internet, so you don't have to wait in line. Yeah, it's much more convenient. Okay, uh, one of the most important sunlight tradition is Seolbim. Uh, family gathers together dressed in special sunlight cloth called the Seolbim. Seolbim is new clothing, usually traditional clothing called hanbok, like I dressed. Um, we wear this on New Year's Day. Uh, the act of wearing new clothes symbolize forgetting about the past and beginning a new start. Um, the photo shows the parents buying their child's album at a store. Um, you could purchase hanbok for kids for around $50. Yeah, and for adults, um, normally a good quality custom made hanbok stores from 300 to up to $1,000, yeah. Next slide is about chare. Um, in Korea, there are ancestral rites called jesa. Jesa is normally served to remember ancestors on the anniversary of their death. Chare is similar to jesa, but it serves a different objective. Jesa is more general term that includes various types of memorial services, but chare is done more specifically to give thanks to the ancestors on special holidays like Lunar New Year Day. Um, usually this is a commitment for all generations to serve this ceremony. And some families practice this during Seollal, but uh, this is becoming a less popular tradition as families have spread out and become busier. Also, um, most uh, Christians in Korea do not perform this ancestral ritual due to their uh, beliefs. Um, on the morning of Seollal, family members are uh, each dressed up for the occasion, uh, gather in front of the ritual locker table, table and sat on it, uh, various foods according to the law of uh, ancestral rites. As you see the photos, each type of food placed a specific order and directions. Um, the contents of food may vary, but generally includes rice, meat, uh, seafood, fruit, and vegetables. So once said, the rite begins with deep bows as greeting to the ancestor spirit and proceed with offerings and prayers uh, before ending with bidding farewell to the spirit. Next. Uh, after the chare is done, we do sebe. This is the exciting part. Uh, family members take turns from the oldest to the youngest and give a deep bow to the elderly and parents. Sebe is the name of the former uh, New Year's greetings for the elders of the family. Sebe is to show respect to the elders and to wish them good health and a long life. The younger generation of the family gather to take deep bows to the elders with words, Sehe, Bok, Mani, Patiseyo, which means please receive a lot of good fortune for the new year. Then after the bow, parents or relatives will give the children Sebeton, which means New Year's money and words of a blessing in return for the new year as a solar gift. So 
kids love this and wait for this every year. I remember when I was a kid, my favorite part of solar was getting New Year's money from parents and relatives. Usually each person gives children from $10 to uh, $50. So it was the official day I could make a lot of pocket money. Yeah, this was the best day of my life. Okay. The biggest part of Sala is the food. There are many, many types of food served during Sala, but a main dish that cannot be missed is Tokguk, a rice cake soup. As you see the photos, uh, Tokguk is made with karetto, a long white rice cake, and other ingredients such as garnish of eggs, beef, and dry seaweed. Karet dog is made as a long string, a symbol of health and long life for everyone in the family. In Korea, eating dog cook on New Year's Day is believed to add a year to one's age. Um, Koreans count age a bit differently than other parts of the world. In Korean culture, once you are born, you are already one year old. Um, already, um, Although one day of birth is celebrated each year, Lunar New Year makes a traditional celebration of growing a year older. The rice cake soup tteokgu is part of the New Year, New Age celebration. Everyone eats the soup together, symbolically becoming a year older after the soup is finished. So as a joke, Korean says, the more balls of tteokgu you eat, you, the older you will get. So for example, if I eat uh, two balls of duck on New Year's Day, I get two years older to my age. It's fun way to get someone's age and joke about how many more balls they will eat. So some Korean adults make jokes like, oh, I'm not going to eat this ball of duck because I don't want to grow older like that. <laughs> it's fun. Okay, let's talk more about food. We have plenty of delicious Korean dishes to share with family on the New Year's Day. Uh, for the side dishes, we have jeon, which is better than fried dishes, as well known as Korean pancakes. Various jeon are typically prepared, such as meat jeon, fish jeon, or skewer jeon. And, and we eat japchae, Korean no uh, glass noodles, which is a delicious dish full of flavor and color. It's enjoyed year round as a healthy and light appetizer or side dish. We eat namur made with edible grass or leaves and kalbitjim is a popular meat dish prepared for solar. It's a beef short ribs braised in a sweet and salty sauce with carrots and potatoes. And we also have a sweet dessert for um, New Year's Day. Hangwa is traditional Korean sweets. They're usually made from powdered grains such as rice, honey, cinnamon, and ginger. And shikhe, shikhe is a sweet beverage made with malt barley and malt powder and rice. This is often uh, consumed after heavy meals and helps in uh, helps aid in digestion. We have yakwa, which is deep fried uh, wheat based Korean traditional cookies made with honey, sesame oil and ginger juice. Yakwa was my favorite snack growing up. And uh, shonga is traditional fruit punch uh, made from persimmon, cinnamon and ginger. It's often garnished with pine nuts. Well, I feel so hungry now. <laughs> Solar is a perfect time for families to play some fun games together. On New Year's Day, the entire family gathers and play traditional games such as Yunnori, Chegichagi, Yonnaligi, and Pengichiki. The most common activity is Yunnori. This is a board game that involves three, four wooden sticks and moving a, a game piece uh, across the board. This strategy game has been a part of Solar for hundreds of years.
This game is easy to learn and uh, family members all of ages can enjoy playing it together. Some other popular uh, games played during this holiday are Chagi Chagi. This is a hockey sack type game um, where you kick a shuttlecock and try to keep in the air as long as you can. Yeah, and Yonaliki, this is kite flying, and Pengichiki, this is top spinning. Many Korean children, uh, Korean children enjoy playing these games on New Year's Day. Okay, well, that's all about my presentation today. I hope uh, you enjoyed this and you have learned something new about Korean New Year. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask me later during the Q&A session. Okay, then I hand it over to the next presenter, Billy and Cherry. Okay, thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can you, see my, can you see my screen? Hi, so my name is Cherry. My name is Billy. And we're both placement students at Yi Hong this year. And before we start our presentation, we wanted to wish everyone a Happy New Year in Chinese. So in Cantonese, we say San Ning Fai Lo. In Mandarin, it's Xin Nian Kuai Le. And we're very excited to be here to share and learn about how different col cultures celebrate Chinese New Year or New Year's actually. So today, Billy and I will be talking about Chinese New Year. Yep, yeah, I'll start by introducing the story of the ox, one of the animals from the Chinese zodiac. Once upon a time, the ox used to be a messenger of the earth at the palace. This is way longer before the ox became one of the zodiac animals. By the time the human's earth has been suffering under sandstorm and people near the desert hope to improve the environment. The people have been praying and praying for the emperor to help. Finally, the emperor sent the ox to plant grass in the desert. The ox was happy to take on the challenge. When the ox first arrived, the ox misunderstood the order and planted too much grass in both the desert and regular farmland, which caused a lot of trouble to the farmers. He received a lot of complaints from the farmer and was reported to the great emperor. The emperor got really mad and punished the ox for its lifetime to eating grass on earth to help the humans. The ox has been very hardworking ever since working for the human on the field. With the plowing work and eating grass, the land became fertilized and soft, which drove up the food production for the people. Because of the ox work ethics, hardworking and diligent, it got the chance to participate in the great race which to determine the 12th zodiac. As we might know, the ox at the end won the great race and placed second after the rat. That is another good story. Because of time concern, we will move on to the next part, the origin of Chinese New Year. Okay, so now we'll be talking about the origin of Chinese New Year. So Chinese New Year is also known as the Lunar New Year or Spring Festival, and the history of it can be traced back to about 3,800 years ago. Um, the dates of celebration follows the phases of the moon, which is a Lunar New Year. Um, if you, um, Billy, I think I need to click on the next slide. Um, so on the right, you can see the lunar calendar, which uh, Chinese New Year follows. Um, so Chinese New Year starts with the new moon and ends with the full moon. So it's a 15 day festival. And then next slide. 
So there are various legends and stories regarding the history of Chinese New Year, but today I'll talk about the most popular one. So thousands of years ago, there was a monster named Nian, which means year in English, that would attack villagers at the start of each New Year and eat all the livestock, crops, or even people. So to stop the monster from destructing and attacking people, uh, people started to put food at their doors for the monster. And they also found that the monster was afraid of loud noises, bright color, bright lights, and the color red. So people use these things to chase the beast away. And because of this, Chinese New Year became a celebration to usher out the old year and bring luck and prosperity to the new year and includes fireworks, uh, firecrackers, red clothes, red envelopes containing money and decorations. So red packets are usually given out by parents, grandparents, and others to children, but sometimes employees or elders may also receive red packets. And traditionally, you didn't have to give out red packets if you are not married. Um, Chinese New Year is a time to feast and visit family members and honor relatives who have passed away. Um, so the origin and customs of Chinese New Year have been passed down from many dynasties throughout the years, um, which has ultimately influenced and established how Chinese New Year is celebrated today. And next we'll be talking about the food we eat in Chinese New Year. So here's my favorite part. <laughs> food has been a very big part of Chinese culture or I may say all culture, especially on special holidays. So this is rice ball. It's round circle um, dessert. It means reunion and also of its sticky texture, it means the intimate and interrelated relationship we have. Um, there are different fillings, salty and sweet that you may see in the picture. The, the sweet one, we may put um, sesame and um, peanuts inside. For the salty one, we have meat, mushroom, green onions. It's very much like the, the filling of dumplings. Dumplings. Dumplings represent wealth. This is a very popular type of food, especially in the northern part of China, because it looks like um, a traditional um, ancient uh, money. It's not just about eating, but the whole process of making dumplings um, it usually, it is a family activity. I always rem remember uh, when I was young, I um, got to make dumplings with my family. And the funny thing is that there is a certain way to arrange the dumplings, not round, but linear. Because uh, a, if it's a loop, then it means that we are going in a loop. We're not going forward. This is rice cake. The name pronunciation represents promotion in uh, career. The sticky feature also means family reunion and the um, interrelated relationship. Just like rice balls, there are two ways or like multiple ways of cooking. First of all, if it's salty, we usually make it with cabbage and carrot stir fry. If it is free, uh, sweet, then we either eat it alone or we wrap and um, fry with eggs. This is noodle. We call it longevity noodle because it represents the um, longevity of the life. In Taiwan, that's where I came from. We have many uh, people eating that um, in the Chinese New Year and in many other regions of China too. Uh, this is a very simple noodle. We put soy sauce, we put vegetable and egg, and people often eat it the first morning of the New Year. Now we are going to talk about the uh, 15 days of Chinese New Year. So as we mentioned before, Chinese New Year is 15 days long. Um, so um, for the next slide, um, according to Chinese legend, Nuwa, the goddess, created the world and created certain animals on different days. So each day is considered the birthday of the corresponding animal. Um, on the seventh day, human beings were created from yellow clay after the creation of the world. Chinese people from different ethnic groups may celebrate Chinese New Year slightly differently, and some families may um, choose to celebrate through a less traditional and more flexible way. But today, I'll talk about the traditional ways that people used to celebrate uh, the 15 days. So the first day is 
um, called Yuan Dan, which is the birthday of the chicken. So usually on the first day, the oldest or senior members of the family will be visited, which is meant to strengthen family ties. And you usually welcome guests with tea and sweet treats like sugared fruits, which is supposed to sweeten one's year. And it's served on a round or octave octagonal tray because it resembles togetherness. So the tray is usually called um, tray of togetherness. And usually the street, uh, the suites will be arranged in eight or six units as the number eight symbolizes fortune and six symbolizes luck. Each item in the tray usually has its own symbolic meaning as well. Um, the first day also symbolizes a, start, a new start to one's life and new hopes for prosperity, wealth, and happiness. Um, you can also see lion or dragon dances, which brings prosperity and luck, and Chinese opera being performed during this time. The second day is the birthday of the dog, and traditionally women would visit and pay respect to their children, to their birth parents, along with their husband and children. So it's the day of visiting the wife's side of the family. People may also pray to their ancestors and all the gods during this time. And since it's the birthday of the dog, pets and strays are fed especially well during this day. The third day is the birthday of the pig. And traditionally people who had family deceased in the past three years may choose not to house visit as a form of respect to the dead. And on the other hand, um, the third day is when people may visit the graves of the dead. And some people believe it's not a good day to house visit at all and that going outside is bad luck. So they choose to stay home. The fourth day is the birthday of the sheep and it's basically a continuity of day three where people stay home and welcome the kitchen gods back to the world and families can may burn incense and offer food and alcohol to welcome him. The fifth day is known as breaking the fifth, so the taboos of the fourth day can be broken, like sweeping the floor and clearing the rubbish bins. And it's a day, it's the birthday of the god of fortune, so businesses usually reopen this day, and offerings and prayers are made to the god of fortune. People can also leave their doors and windows open and let off firecrackers to attract the god and welcome him in. The sixth day is the birthday of the horse. So on this day, people may visit temples, relatives, or friends. And it's also a day to send out the ghost of poverty. So people may throw away old clothes or clean the house on this day as well. The seventh day is the birthday of men. This is referred to as a day of the mankind as the goddess Nuar created humans on the seventh day. And to honor the creations of Nuar, vegetable dishes or raw fish will be eaten to increase abundance, prosperity and vigor. Day eight is the birthday of rice and this day is to celebrate the most essential Chinese crop. Some people may pray to the Jade Emperor at midnight. And there's also a folk proverb that said, if the day is bright and clear, the rest of the year will bring good harvest. So day nine is the birthday of the Jade Emperor. So feastings and offerings are made to the emperor by some Chinese people to honor him. Day 10 to 12 just includes more feasting and visits with family and friends. So day 13 is a time to eat plain food like vegetarian food, rice, and mustard greens to cleanse the digestive system. And this day would also be the time where people would start preparing and shopping for the Lantern Festival. Day 14 um, is when preparations are made for the Lantern Festival, such as buying, buying or decorating lanterns, as well as making food like the rice balls we mentioned earlier. And finally, on the last day is the Lantern Festival. So this marks the day of the full moon, also known as first night of the full moon. So reunion dinner is held with lanterns and oranges being a large part of the celebrations. And it's customary to eat the rice balls made of uh, flour we mentioned earlier. Lanterns are displayed during this festival at lantern fairs or at temples. And the festival is associated with guiding lost and ill-bred evil spirits home while celebrating and cultivating positive relationships between people, families, nature, and the higher beings as it's believed they bring and return light each year. And another legend suggests that this day is to bring good fortune, bestowing wealth and good luck to people. Thanks, Cherry, for introducing uh, the days and activities that we do. I'm sure that in only 15 minutes, it is very hard to um, introduce uh, Chinese New Year. 
but that there is a lot of opportunity for us to learn and it was a pleasure to have us join your um, celebration. We hope that the pandemic will pass our life back to normal. Again, we wish you a very happy new year and stay safe.